Well, hello, boys and girls. Here we are at uh, When We Feel Eight O'Clock. We're back again. And check it out. We're having like a sort of hockey parade here. <laughs> we're, we're building on our uh, members list. We've been doing a lot of collaborations. Of course, you know Steel Flyers uh, at Steel Flyers at Twitter and also a podcast he's going to tell you about in a second as well. And Joseph Borak, you know, we've been doing this as well. And uh, so we decided, why don't we all get together? Instead of just having a two-way conversation. And my, we all have our own thoughts on everything. And I was like, that sounds fantastic. Can we get much more hockey knowledge in one room? I don't think we can. I don't think so. But uh, anyways, we decided to get together and wanted to talk about some of the things that are happening right now and some of the things that are going to be happening soon. Uh, the CBA, the uh, possibility that hockey may be back in the Olympics again. And, of course, we have training camp coming up. So we're going to talk some uh, playoffs, of course. Steel, what's going on in your life right now? What are you doing? I hear you might have a podcast going up, a website, all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah, all kinds of stuff, man. We're hitting all the media outlets. Uh, first of all, I just want to say how honored and privileged and blessed I feel to be here with both of you guys. Um, I look up to you guys as as the the the, the standard. And as Mike Tomlin says, the standard is a standard. So that's what I look to you guys as the standard. Um, and I, I feel very honored and privileged to be here. Uh, you can reach me uh, on Twitter at SteelFlyers52. Uh, website coming out here real soon, SteelFlyers.com. Um, also, the Steel Flyers podcast, you can find me on Spotify, Google, uh, RadioCast, um, all kinds of places. So, uh, yeah, it's 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 been a whirlwind and so by all means it's it's an honor to be here with you guys so thank you very much right on and joe you as well my friend yeah i hope everyone's doing well it's an honor to join again um and i love being here i love talking uh hockey and all day every day whenever we can and um of course uh we have some very good news with the cba uh pending ratification but like all the great insiders up here, LeBron and everyone said, Elliot Freeman, it seems like that's almost set to just happen at this point with how things went to go. There's a late snag. Yeah. So, and then like Steele said, you can find me on uh, Twitter at JJ Boric 26 or for Andrew and my buddy's podcast that Steele's appeared on uh, so far, True Philadelphian Sportscast. That's true underscore Philly Sport. And I also started an Instagram for that, which is just True Philadelphian Sportscast. So that's just you type it out, P H I L A D E L P H I A N S. And then there is an extra S, there's a double S for sports and then into KS. So make sure you okay. put that second S and then you're fine that. So that's where, and then ANYP Phillies is where I do the baseball one, which is with a bunch of other people. That's like a group of seven people. So mix it up, do a bunch of different stuff. Baseball and hockey are my top twos. But uh, so I usually like talking about those the most. So that's usually where you can find me at. And then on Pub Sports Radio, that's one that I missed. If too, you I were guess. wondering why you might Flyers find them there, you just yeah. keep on listening to this right now. I would subscribe and get the bell if I were you. There are people that are doing that sort of thing. And uh, you listen to what we're going to be talking about here right away, and you'll see why you need to go to these places, because these people are fantastic. That's why I bring them on to this pod broadcast. Um, so let's get into it. Let's get into it. We're going to look at uh, where we start. Okay, let's go with the CBA. What's going on with the CBA? I personally think the CBA is going to be a very easy process. It's not going to take much. I think both both of them are very much into just uh, getting a deal pounded out and moving on right now. This is not a time in the NHL's uh, in the NHL's interest for the players or for the owners to be having any unrest. I would say. What do you guys feel about that? Yeah, I mean, I would say it's more at a dotting the I's. The, uh, when I saw a tweet come out yesterday, it was about the players' reps had a meeting at, I'm trying to remember what insider it was from, but it was from one of them at 545, and then they expect it to be at most 72 hours for the players and all the overall league and everything to hold a vote. So that's, of course, why, like we're talking about, it got pushed back to June or June, July 13th, 
as the start yeah. of training camp instead of the 10th because they didn't want to rush it similarly to how uh, Major League Baseball kind of got their deal done and then said, okay, everybody get here in four days. Um, so uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's um, that's a thing that the NHL did a very good job with not rushing it there. So I do like what they're doing, and I think it's just more – they just need to get everything ratified, like everyone said. I mean, Pierre LeBron normally doesn't come out overconfident. So when he, when I saw him tweet, like, basically this is a done deal, and then he re- yeah. rectified it by saying, well, obviously all this needs to be done. But And then you heard other people talking on NHL Network, like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. But, like, everyone sounded so positive. You know it's just kind of the finishing touches. Yeah, you know I agree, and and I and I think that the fact that they but they did change it though because it was originally for six. Yeah, and that now it's now we're down to four. Okay, um, so that that obviously was something that they had discussed, and that was a change. So that's why I think there was a delay because of how they had to get their ducks in a row to make sure that they could put that out for the vote, because that's what's going on right now. They're putting the that that four year uh, CBA extension is now out for the vote. So once we hear back from the vote, then, then we'll be good to go. So that's why I think uh, uh, the, the tweet came out saying that he was pretty confident with, with the way things were going to go. And, and I'll tell you what, the best news out of all of it, I mean, other than I agree with you guys 110% that there's not going to be any um, labor issues, especially during a pandemic and everything else with what's going on, and especially with the way things went down the last time there was a work stoppage. But the best news out of all of it is Olympics are going to be – the players are going to be playing in the Olympics. And I think that's – I don't care what anything else is in that CBA. That, to me, right there is win-win all the way. Yeah, yeah. as long as the IOC and IIHF, like you said, they're able to fine-tune those details, but that shouldn't be too complicated, all things. Yeah. The NHL (laughs) decide to be complicated. But another thing I wanted to point out was uh, they're not going to comment until the vote's over on any further details on the CBA and anything in in contrast with the collective bargaining agreement until we know about the results of the vote. Yeah, no, I agree. No, I agree 110%. So. Yeah, but the Olympics I, I, are going to be cool. The Olympics are going to be fun. It's going to be fun to do a video on who's going to – now we get to do the who's going to be on the team videos. That's what Yeah, I'm that's saying. true. Yeah. <laughs> going to be a little that's, bit because that's still a little ways away. You don't want to do that sure, way. But we, it's, it doesn't your mind immediately go to it. I mean, it's like, it's yeah, right. Like it's immediate. Who's the other team? Like, <laughs> bang. Hmm. Like that, so that. <laughs> for, for us, I know Kaner will still be on the team no matter what. He's I don't think he's gonna slow down by twenty twenty two. And then Austin Matthews would be one of your top two American uh guys there when it comes to forward center. Yeah. The yeah, United I mean, States are gonna have the best team that they've ever had, I think. Yeah. I have to agree with you on that hundred and ten percent all the way around. I mean, for the first time, the American side has some good talent. Oh, it's yeah. not – they're not uh, those tweener guys that are oh. just on the fringe. Like they haven't quite made a foothold in the NHL and they're still kind of playing in the minors and they're still playing college or whatever, whatever. The, yeah, but the, for the first time we're going to have some t- good skill guys coming for the United States team. And I look for the United States team to be actually one of the favorites along with the Russians and the Canadians. Uh, uh, there's gonna That's be a lot of strong. There's a lot. Of yeah, there's a lot. Of... It's gonna be one heck of an Olympics. It's like I agree. I think you're gonna see. People are gonna get to see the growth of the NHL. There, it is. There is a lot of talent out there. Well, the... in, in in Sweden, Finland, right? Like all of them, you can make it. Germany, all of Italy, all of those Germany oddball countries. Dry sidle and all that. I mean, it's it's awesome to watch the talent that is flowing into this. Uh, if that's flowing into the league. I mean, all you have to do is look at the KHL and and look at the Swedish leagues and look at all those European leagues and look at the talent that's gone over there. I mean, uh, they're going to see a huge, vast difference from the last time that the NHL players were playing in the in the in the Olympics compared to now this time, and the not just the NHL guys. But you're going to see the other guys too, like from the Swedish leagues, from the KHL, because those guys are going to be in there playing too. 
So I think I agree with what you said, Perlo, perfectly. They're going to see a huge jump in the product, the huge jump in the, the performances, a huge jump in how guys are playing, and, and, and a much better game on the ice. Whether it, do, it doesn't matter either if it's going to be the big ice or the small ice, it's not going to matter. Yeah, yeah. Probably, probably be the bigger. I think they would keep it the Olympic. Oh yeah, style. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, but when they play the when they play the uh, the little tournaments they've been doing now, the I, IHF tournaments now, that that's been on big ice, right? I believe so. Yes. Yeah. So, and I love watching that. Those are great too, man. Those are great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, just think like talking about the U.S. Yeah, you've got. John Gibson and Ben Bishop as your goaltenders, like, whoo! Yeah, so, yeah, it's got... going to be a lot. That's been a lot of times the yeah, I've seen this about the goaltending depth with the U.S., but not this, not not this one coming up. Not they just have stuff. depth in general because you figure you got veteran guys like uh, McDonough's from the U.S. So is Keith Yondel, who hasn't shown signs of slowing down. Um, then you have youngsters that can come in i already mentioned matthews dylan larkin's american um oh nice so you have guys of that nature that are now added to the team as well um john carlson so he yeah. so you have the potential norris trophy candidate uh yeah. so there yeah yeah there's a lot of guys that mix in now i didn't even say patch yet so you got max patch so you got a lot they have a they have a pretty good yeah they have a pretty good list of people with veterans to youngsters where uh, that's why I think the U S will be dangerous in this Olympics too, similar to Canada as how they always have they, they both of those teams have great young people. Mm. They have great older players as well. Wow. Is what you're going to see with Russia. Cause you might really see that with Russia. Cause if Dasuk is still playing well and he comes on as a backup, you're going to have a guy that's what 47, 48. And then you're going to have someone that's yeah. 22. Yeah. Like, right. Team Russia. So like you're going to have someone that wasn't even born when Pablo Dasuk <laughs> started playing hockey, playing with potentially. <laughs> uh, isn't Shesterkin Russian? Yes. Yes. I believe. Vasilevsky and Shesterkin as your two, which one name? Yeah. Wow. And then you wow. have Sorokin too if he comes on like uh we all yeah. think if wow. we all think Sorokin can come on like we think he's gonna come on, you then have Sorokin too. So that those could be your three. You got Vazzy <sighs> at it for a while, Shostarkin who and Sorokin who are two uh, emerging guys. Yeah, Russia's gonna look like We don't even have to talk about the yeah, NHL we'll playoffs, man. We'll just talk about the Olympics. Yeah, Olympics <laughs> yeah. We'll have lots of time for that. So we probably let's get into some playoffs. Yeah. I would uh, a lot of people talk like people talk about um there's a lot of talk about a lot of the uh, uh matchups here in the playoffs, but I don't hear too many people talking about the Islanders and Florida Panthers and I we we were talking before we got on the, on here about about this matchup, and I think personally it's one of the most interesting. Uh, I, I'm I really want to watch this one because the Islanders were not playing well as the season was winding down. We got the whole Bobrovsky situation going on with Florida, and uh, honestly, I flip back and forth with what's going to happen here. What do you guys think about this series? Uh, if you want to put out your prediction, which I think we already did, or just talk about, like, what do you think's going on with Bobrovsky there? Who do you think uh, uh, Islanders and Varlamov, uh, how's that going to work? Are they going to go with Grice? Um, who's got the greater advantage? What do, you, what do you think there with that that series? Well, I was going to say, I think Varlamov, it's been a few years back, but obviously in 15 15- 16 he stepped up for Colorado he didn't finish his career great but he stepped up in the past in the playoffs for them now granted Tomas Grice has also stepped up at times in his career but I think for the salary the fact that he had a pretty solid year I mean it's nothing to laugh about when you have a 2.62 and a 914 so I would say for that he'll probably get the lean to start but obviously if he shows any signs Tomas Grice has been they've been another very good platoon set there so you're going to go right to Tomas Grice if he shows any signs of struggles but because they have those two guys 
I believe the Islanders will still prevail in this series because, like I was saying before this podcast, even with the inconsistency of Florida as a whole, I believe Bob's going to have to play like a Vez- like his normal Vezina Trophy candidate self in order for them to win because their whole team, their offense hasn't been consistent this year, their defense hasn't been consistent this year, and Bob hasn't been consistent this year. So those three things put together don't look good. The Islanders looked more consistent throughout until – recently when play was stopping. So I think that might benefit them the most because they'll be able to go, what the hell happened here? And then kind of revert back and the layoff might benefit a team like them, especially with a coach like Trotch the most uh, to kind of say, okay, we got this. We're resettled. Cause if they have to go to Chris Dreiger, they're done. They don't have a second option. Florida don't have a second option. At least the Islanders, if Varlamov struggles, has a second option. Yeah. I can't even, can't even uh, add to that because when you have depth at goalie with with uh, being able to step up with your second second goalie to come in there and take some wins because we we all know that the, the, the top two goalies maybe even the top three goalies are going to play some games I mean we all know that's going to happen because they're going to be able to bring an unlimited number of goalies so why not play the goalies see how it's going to turn out and and i i agree with what joe said completely i i think unless bob stands on his head and steals some games and he hasn't done that really this year i mean it, he really hasn't okay and unless he plays like his vesna trophy self like joe said there's no way that i don't think florida is going to be able to take it against the islanders i think the islanders have a little bit more too much speed and have a little bit better uh, of a team and i like their goaltending depth better look even though bob is a vesna trophy winner okay and you can't take anything and look if he does if he gets hot then this changes this changes because if he's able to shut her down, then yeah. maybe Florida will be able to do just enough to squeak past. But that, it, yeah, you know, I, uh, I'm still going yeah. Islanders all the way, though. I'm still going Islanders all the way. I, I am too, but I, I'm a little. I think Drager can do some damage. I, I think he's underrated. He's he's really been good when given a chance this year. He did pretty well. But I agree with you, Bob. Even if Bob yeah. can be just above average, he doesn't have to be the old self, I don't think, but above average. But he's been below average. And I see no signs of that changing. So, And the other thing with the, the Florida is their, their depth on defense, I'm not too... That's that's after, what that's my point. Yeah. After, <laughs> that's, why now, that's why I don't trust Dreiger. It's not Chris. It's not Chris Dreiger. Chris Dreiger played perfectly fine in the regular season. You're absolutely right. His team played in front of him. Perfectly fine in the regular season when the team played in front of him in the regular season. In the yeah. playoffs, it's a completely different beast. I worry about like you just said the inconsistency of their defense with a young, inexperienced goalie if he has to get thrown into the playoffs. That's the counterbalance. It's not like Chris Dreiger. He played really well, but it's not like he's just a start. He's a yeah. goalie that you know can be a solid goaltender, but he's not going to be your beast carrying your crown for years like Shostarkin or Sorokin right. over for the yeah. aisle could be. Yeah. So that's what worries me, an inconsistent defense with someone – like him, if he stands on his head like he did at times in the regular season, then sure. But that's a big if when it comes to a young guy with no experience coming into the playoffs. It's funny. I see a lot of people picking Florida here, and I just don't really I wonder care. if it's – I, I do like their offense. Like, they do have some offensive guys that can hurt you. But there's another aspect of Florida that I find uh, that – is a problem and it's psychological because the owner has already come out and said, we got to cut salary. That's true. And you're going into a playoffs with that energy. You know what I'm saying? And the New York Islanders, I think the reason why they faltered at the end was because they were playing a lot of players that weren't used to playing those kind of minutes. And that was what was going to happen with that lineup. Cause it's a little thin, but you give those guys new legs with Barry trot system I, I I have to agree with you guys. I I just I don't even honestly I don't even. I think wonder. It's going to be close. Yeah. I think it's going to be three one something like that. I was going to ask you guys. I wonder if why is because Dreiger did well, even though like I said, I don't think that translates to the players with a youngster and an inconsistent defense per se. But right. maybe some fans are looking at well, Bob has the track record. If he don't get going, 
we have this kid that stepped up for us and played great. Maybe yeah. we can piggyback off of him, who's also at a latter age. Dreiger came up in his mid-20s, so he's kind of in his prime as soon as he came up. So maybe you can fall on him, but I think that's a big ass. So I don't, I don't. Yeah, see especially, him especially an un, 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 unproven uh, guy to come in there and just be in the playoffs and be like, oh, by the way, <laughs> you have to carry the team now, and you're going to get most of the starts. And oh, here you go. I mean, look, there's not hasn't especially there's if been, you're only starting what like twelve games, something like that. Yeah. Game. So, so like, yeah, I agree. That's a big ask. So I, I think, I think we're going with. Uh, I think we're going with Islanders, so that means we're bucking the system, huh? So yeah. the rest, of, the rest of the world's picking Florida, and and you know, but see, I just I, I agree with what you guys say, man. That the defense is just too inconsistent, and and I haven't seen that consistency enough to say, yeah, okay. Even if Bob also- doesn't play lights out, they'll be okay because he if if he doesn't, then they're not going to be okay, and that's just how I feel. Yeah, we also have to point out Florida's got a lot of their scoring when it came up on NHL Network. Noah Jory had a really good scoring year who doesn't normally score 20 goals. So let's see where his scoring is in the postseason. Brett Conley had a great scoring year. Yeah. We're see- so, like, guys that don't normally score your uptick <laughs> amount of goals scored actually for you over the Barkovs who, like, like – uh, What's his name? Quimville said himself had a decent year, but we need Barky, which is what he called him as a nickname. We need him to kind of take over and yeah. establish himself as that dude and not yeah. be playing good. Like we need you to be playing great. That's kind yeah. of what he was getting at. And then you have Huberdo who played well, but like you look at their lineup, if those mixed guys that played well this year having their best seasons kind of play normal in the playoffs. Then they also have that. That's another reason why they're not going to have a chance to compete with a team like the Islanders. Yeah, I agree. I know I agree. I think the Islanders team is too fast for them. I just do. I just. I think Florida might be able to keep up to their speed, but the thing is, it's their system of play. The Islanders can just pick you apart with their system with Barry Trotz. Well, yeah, Barry Trotz does, and that's the thing. I'm, look, I'm not saying that that Quinville is not a good coach. He's obviously a Cup winning coach, but. This is being his, and and this is both each of their coaches the first year with these teams too, right? This, no, this trust is, is second. no trust. So, oh, trust is second. Okay, but this is first year with Quinville on this, so that's why I think you have to be like, and that's another reason why I'm I'm actually going with the Islanders too because of Trot's coaching, and this being Quinville's first year with Florida, um. So that's another reason why I'm going with with the Islanders on this one. Yeah, because the Islanders had no business making it last year, and then they just uh, after, <laughs> John, after after John Tavares left to Toronto, the uh, then they're like everyone's everyone's doom and gloom in Brooklyn or Long Island. Like, oh, we're done. We're not going anywhere. Then they were one of the better teams in the conference. So. Yeah, right. Like what? Yeah. Huh? And you know me. I'm, I'm an energy guy. I look for the reasons why the energy would, may not be there. And uh, you got Hoffman, Dadanoff, Eric Halla all going to be ufas this year and it, oh wow and it really doesn't look like so you're going into a playoffs with this in your mind that you're probably not going to be playing for this team next year so nobody has shown with any a pandemic going in on buying into you nobody has shown interest into buying into you i just yeah. i just don't think that you know that there's that no, i get you there, yeah right so uh, Especially I, I, think that's, have a pandemic. I think that's the reason why Joel Quinville's yeah. had such a difficult time this year is ownership hasn't really given anybody an indication that they're that they've bought into who's there. So how does a coach right. get that out of people? Right. Because like know, all they did was spend the money. Before. All they did was spend the money on the coach and then they spent the money on a really good goalie. And <laughs> yeah, all right. Exactly. Make it work. A yeah. pandemic's going to play into that, though, with guys with expiring contracts, because if you're not playing that well in the first, say, two games of the series in a five-game series, and you're down 2-0, those guys might go, well, there's no point at me further risking myself I, at this point, so I should just tone it back too. this game yeah. and make sure I don't injure myself or get into as close contact to potentially contact the virus. That is, so that's, that's also another yeah. side of it. Yeah. That's a very good point. Like, why would you? You got a you you got a family. This team hasn't bought into me. I got to become a UFA. Do I want to be breaking a leg or something right now, or 
not no, yeah. right? Yeah, I'm not I'm not putting all the way out there for you because you're not putting all the way out there for me. And that I, really yeah. resonates with players. It really and and see that's the thing that none of the talking heads want to talk about. They yeah. they don't want to talk about the fact that that's a very key thing with players. If the if the ownership is not buying into you, that really affects players. Yeah. I love to hear what people say about that. Well, they're professionals and that stuff doesn't matter. You're you're they're human. They're human. I don't care if you're professional or not. You're human and that matters. Your family matters. And I don't Everybody's care trying to get paid. I don't care if you made 12 million in the last 3 years. You have an opportunity to make another 20, 30 million or not be able, you know, you it's I if it's me, I know it matters. It would matter to me. It would matter to me. Yeah, it all depends on the guy. Some guys say don't talk to me until after the season because I don't like talking during the season and yeah. playing. And then other guys say, let's try to get this done now. So it all depends on the individual. And it you also have guys, guy too. Is. Right. No, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you also have guys, too, that are like, um, no, nah, man, my agent takes care of that. Yeah. There's that's other guys that don't say. care either. Yeah, most guys. Mm-hmm. Don't. See, that's the guys that I like. Because look, you're here. To, you're you're getting paid to play the game. You, you know what I'm saying. You, you're paying your agent uh, a really large amount of money for him to get you a really large contract, so you can continue to play the game that you love. But so, your agent yeah. can't get you a large contract if you get injured in the playoffs for the next three years and you're done. Yeah, yeah that's right. And Unless if that team hasn't paid. bought into you yeah. now. You're going into yeah. this going, do I want to well, go I was, into that corner right now? I mean, it's just yeah. subconsciously, right? I was just about to say, though, about agents and negotiating contracts. I think the one caveat is unless if you're Jonathan Tease, because if I remember correctly, <laughs> I'm pretty sure Jonathan Tease got rid of his agent and then yes. negotiated his own new contract, which is a very good contract for himself with the Blackhawks. So that was an odd scenario, but it worked out very great for him. And and obviously it worked out well because that would be kind of like if Claude Giroux kind of said, you know what, I don't need you anymore. And then negotiated himself with the Flyers because of the relationship that's already there. Yeah. That's kind of fit into place so well. Jonathan Tate is one of your franchises, like gods, yeah. basically. Like everybody loves him in Chicago. If you didn't negotiate in good faith with him when he got rid of the people would – riot because you didn't negotiate in good faith or right. <laughs> yeah good. there was no negotiations so, yeah, there was, was there was okay they sat down in the room and then they and they walked up to Tavares and they said okay so what's the number and hey. Tavares wrote the number down on the piece of paper and showed it up to him and they were like all right how many years do you want and he wrote down the number and and showed it to him and they were like all right <laughs> yeah Jonathan pays you yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. He, he just probably walked in, but that's exactly what ha- there's. Pl- there's other players that have the ability to do that. It's just Taze might actually have started a trend. That's another thing. He could have potentially, when you've proven yourself, it's going to be interesting to see if he started a mini trend so players save some money. Because, like you said, you dish out a lot of money to your agent. If you cut out your agent and you know how to do that stuff yourself. That saves you a lot of money for your family. It's going to be interesting if you started a ten percent. I believe is what the agents get. And there's Back a there's a. I think did it didn't he? Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, I think he he was one of them. I was going to mention another guy too. Um, didn't Eiserman wasn't Eiserman his own? Didn't he represent oh, himself? Oh, probably the guy's a super genius. Guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and Richard Sherman from the NFL. He yeah, represents himself. Maybe I mixed up Backstrom with Taze, but I thought Taze did it too. But I know, I know, yeah, Backstrom did do it. I wonder if I mixed up Backstrom with Taze. I don't yeah. know. I, I, I'd have to look that up, but it wouldn't be, it wouldn't surprise me if Taze did that because Taze is the kind of guy that, but yeah, you know, you're bringing this up. It does, it won't affect some players. Some right. Fa- some players have a kind of character that can say, you know what, I got 12 million in my pocket and I'm happy for that. And it's not going to bother them a bit that uh, it's not going to bother them a bit. Sorry, I got to plug in here. It's not going to bother them a bit. And then there's other guys that's going to really affect. Um, it, there's there's guys that just the fact that there's a pandemic out there, it, it can affect them. Everybody, all the players have a different mental way, state of doing things. But I do think when an organization has acted the way Florida has, the odds of all of the guys in that room being mentally able to not let all that stuff affect them is very 
Yes. And I and that's the reason why I think Florida is going to win more, lose more than anything is because of this transition thing that they're going into. I just don't think that is a I think that's a very poor energy to be going into the playoffs with. Cuz they came right out and admitted that they were, you know, came right out and said, "Look, we're <laughs> There's going to be guys that are not going to be on this team next year because we're cutting money, right? Yes, they came right true. out and said yeah. that. So there's going to be guys that are not on this team next year, you know? Yeah. And that's probably, you know, like if you look at certain teams throughout history, certain teams need that kind of kick in the pants to restart their franchise or to get them pointed more in the right direction. So yeah. I think with Quinville, they got the right coach. Uh, Bob is a wait and see if, if he can mature, which it seems like he's rounding into and he can start playing a little better and start playing closer to more his Vesna trophy self. Um, they might be able to round into shape in the next year or two or whatever, but it's just not going to yeah, be. Yeah, we talked sure. about it before the podcast. Florida, sometimes you have an adjustment year going down there that's different. You, If you were in a culture that has a more lively, involved fan base, that's obviously not so much down there. So uh, Columbus has a pretty solid fan base. One of my friends is a Blue Jackets fan, so from what I know, they're pretty solid up there. So um, that, that changes it a little bit too. But I was going to say, I did mix up to correct. I mixed up Nicholas Baxham and Jonathan Taze because Taze and Kane have the same agent, according to this Pat Brinson. Oh, okay. So that was, uh, that was Nick. Got. Yeah, yeah, Pat Bryson. That was uh, Nicholas Backstrom. Then, but either yeah. way, the same premise remains: a great center that can play a two-way game, and he negotiated his own contract and got a great contract for himself. So, either way, he has a he's a namesake, a guy that. We had a great relationship with the Capitals, so that's why that were he might still start a trend. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. And but I got, did fix those up. They got a great owner there. You want to talk about a team with a great owner? Leonis for Washington is absolutely fantastic. He's kind of he's got it. He stays out of everything, but he just seems to know how to bring the right energy to his organization that he owns. Uh, it's it's pretty impressive. So for a guy like Backstrom, who's at the end of his career, to say, you know what, I don't need an agent. That is showing me that there's a guy who trusts the owner and the management to be able to do things in good faith and uh, get things done without any real problems. Wise, uh, wise man once said, go to man who write check. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so if you go to the owner and 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 you're plying your wares to the owner, he's the guy that's signing the check. Yeah. So uh, that's where I'm going. That's who I want to talk to. Who's yeah. the guy signing the check? You know. But so. you, I mean, agents are there for a reason too. But if an if a if a player is like doing what he's doing, he's saying this team's not going to try to screw me, and I know it. So that's showing a lot of confidence. It's showing a lot there's probably, of respect. It's showing a lot of respect for the organization. Yeah, no, I agree. But there's probably language in that contract that has some things in there that prevents and or is protective of both sides as well, too. So we don't get the privilege of reading those contracts. So there's probably stuff in there that has protections for both. And you know what I mean? So, But yeah. still, though, to be able to negotiate and get your own contract, I mean, what? I'm I'm all for that. I'm I'm not a fan of agents at all. <laughs> uh, I I understand their purpose and I understand why they have to be there to some extent, but it's it's very difficult for me to yeah. try to have somebody who's saying that. Well, I can best represent you, but I need ten percent. Well, the best person to represent you is you. What? Well, well, but I mean. I, I don't like I said, you know, that's just my opinion. So, yeah, the other thing is the uh, best we, person to represent you is you if the people, if it's in good faith. Yeah. Uh, you got to like, it depends completely on the contract. And even I was just being about, in bad faith. What I mean by that is teams are, let's face it, teams now in the salary cap world, they got to find ways to get that cap mm -hmm. and they are going to do what they can to do it. And an agent should know how to work against that. And a lot of players just don't have their head there. I get well, it. I get it. But. Backstrom, though, he actually, 
his last contract was a total of 10 years, 67, which gave him 6.7 about per year. And then uh, this year he got paid a base because of getting some of his uh, bonuses, I guess, of eight. And then, but he actually negotiated because his next contract when he kicks in is five years, 46. So that gives his AAV 9.2. Yeah. Jeez. So he actually negotiated at his age, his AAV up almost three million with by himself. He, he negotiated so, a hell of a contract. Yeah. I, I think he was overpaid <laughs> and not overpaid. He was overpaid in the sense that by the time the end of that contract comes, they're probably gonna have to buy it out. But he wasn't overpaid because he did such he's done is so he much gonna play it out? Is he going to play out the contract, or is he going to retire before the is end of the contract? Is he going to be like 38, 39 before, by the time that happens? Because if he, if he retires before the end of the contract now with the new CBA, um, I don't think that that counts against the books. Oh, it doesn't. If he retires. Right. Yeah. 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 If, if they still the pay the contract, though, right? Yeah, but Backstrom's still only 32, so I'm not sure. Okay. Because – that's not that'll be your mid i don't know if we'll retire in a five-year contract unless yeah, no. if something pops up uh in those five years yeah right but he also has from looking at cap friendly they would have he has his modified no trade but in his new um in his new thing it says um for the first three years nmc and then modified no trade 2023 24 2024 25 Okay. So, does what the I'm not sure, Pirlo. Do you know what NMC means? Uh, no movement clause. No move clause. Yeah. That's just that's just yeah. what that that stands for no movement at all. So is that the yeah. one that he can say basically if you want to trade him, he has to okay anybody? Yes. It's it's a it's a modified no movement clause. Uh, let me let me look at the whole thing here. Yeah, because yeah, um, now, well, now, now if they no movement clause and he submits a seventeen no trade list. Yeah. Okay. So seventeens he can't be traded to. Gotcha. Right. That's right. actually not that great for that. Like, there's there's people that are less talented than him that have better no movement clauses than that. Really? But I think for him, he thinks um, with this ownership. It'll always be in good faith anyway, so he didn't really care much about it. And he took the money instead. See, so like, let's say you wanted a, a no movement clause. No, you can't move me at all. They're gonna, I would come back to you and say, oh, well, you want, I'm not giving you 9.2 million for that. Yeah, right. So, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to give you like six and a half. Or they'll give him less years. They'll say, yeah, we'll give you 9.2, but you're not going to get six years. You're only going to get four. Four years or something like that. Right, yeah. So yeah. That's how these so. negotiations go. Mm -hmm. I'm Man. not going to pretend that an agent, like you may be right, on the surface it seems to me that an agent's not necessary, okay? It does seem to me, but I don't know enough about being an agent for me to say that. So I don't either. It's, it's, yeah, it's the sports uh business i haven't watched much but i know there's some docs on it and i know one i can't remember who it was but like one baseball player said i don't get into any of that like i just do what i gotta do and then he like some guys it, it might take away even from how good of a player they could be to have to focus on that because it's just drawing extra focus where some guys are just so good at doing a bunch of different things like Nicholas Backstrom and Ovechkin obviously could do whatever the hell he wanted to also. But uh, like you have other guys that probably want to just focus on what they're like Crosby. Crosby is a guy that wants to just say, you know, that since he came to the league, he said that he just wants to focus on playing. He doesn't care about anything else going on outside other than now he's stepping up with um, the social justice. But other than that, Crosby's never really made a stance on outside stuff of hockey. So Crosby's a perfect example of someone that if he he wouldn't want to probably represent himself because he doesn't care about wouldn't want to learn about all that mumbo jumbo. He just wants to do what he has to do. Well, you also have to take into consideration too the level of players that can that can garner the fact that they want to create their own contract. And and I would put Co uh, Crosby in that league where he mm -hmm. could pretty much call his own contract 
So you don't you don't have that's a very that's a very rarefied group of players that can you know it's just would he be comfortable personality wise though that's the other side of it some guys aren't comfortable going into their owner's office and saying hey i know i'm one of the best players in the league here's what i demand because it's just not in their personality i think some of those guys like i could be wrong here i'm just guessing but like mcdavid and stuff like that they they I don't think they pay their agents as much as other people do because agents are scrambling to get them. So they can say, they can say, Hey, you know what? Uh, instead of the 10%, it's going to be uh, 6%. I'll pay you 6%. If some, if you'll do it for 6% instead of 10%, I could be uh, okay. wrong about that. Okay. All right. So let me, let me just, let me riddle me this Batman. What's 10% of the new Patrick Mahomes contract oh gosh I <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a lot yeah. of zeros yeah he yeah. broke he broke trout's record for the most by a right little bit yeah. for the most uh, expensive uh, contract yeah and trout's trout's was what like 375 no, his was four something. Four, four okay. Twenty something point. Okay. Something, and then his was like four twenty something point something higher than Mike Trout. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it was something in the. Four <laughs> and I don't. Uh, and I mean, good for him. I mean, he's. In and that's for right. guaranteed. Yeah, Matt Mahomes can get over four fifty. I think they said it was. Because guaranteed was right around Trout's, but in terms of what he can fully get, that beats Mike Trout's by a. Yeah, his his fully guaranteed, I think, was only like two hundred and seventy seven million or three hundred and seventy seven million or something stupid like that. But yeah, that's that's ridiculous. But hey, man. um, one of the things about like doing contracts is there's a lot so much involved in it. There's so much involved with the union, especially those big guys, their contracts will. Okay, I make ten million, all right. I don't think a lot of the players care about a ten, eleven million too much, so much, but that one more million can give that seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar guy seven hundred and ninety thousand. And that forty thousand to that guy is a lot. You know what I mean? So that's why I think a lot of guys are like, I just give it to my agent because I don't want it to play in my conscience about what it is. And I just want my agents to do what's best for everybody involved, and I don't want to have to deal with it. And, and you know, there's a lot of that issue involved in there where you can just kind of say, hey, that's my agent. That's the other thing. If you do work out a deal, you don't have to answer any questions. All you yeah. got to do is say, I got an agent over there. That's, that's it. true. That's it. You know? The other thing, <laughs> Mahomes got 150 or 141 million. I just saw this. Uh, injury guarantee. Yeah. 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 $141 million injury guarantee. What? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know that 70% of his contract is guaranteed. Yeah. He had the hot. That might be a. I wonder if that's a record. It is. Yeah. For, percent. for guaranteed in the NFL, that's that's a record. I think that's a record. Not, not you, for the you, money. You know, the percentage. I think. Yes. Yes. For the percentage. Look, you don't even see. Formula One guys making this kind of money. Yeah. Soccer okay. guys, maybe. Uh, Soccer the guys. closest guy that we had in Formula One was, and now, Almost no, it's right now, I think Lewis Hamilton, with everything that he's doing, is making $44 million a year. Okay. So, like I said, that's, that's Formula One money. When you start talking about that kind of money, whew. European yeah. soccer players, that's what that can Yeah, be. they that's make a lot of money too, yeah. Money. But you but you also have to take into account that it's the Euro too, so that's a bit of a different you yeah. have to take in Apparently Cristiano yeah. gets a hundred and five million and Messi gets a hundred that's what this so they're still not near that total. They get paid a lot, but they're not near Patty Mahomes. Not Patty now Mahomes anyway. Yeah. Every penny the guy is a delight. I'm, I don't watch football a lot. But I'll watch when Mahomes is playing for sure. He is incredible. <laughs> I have not yeah. seen a guy that can run the ball. Man, he's, he's amazing, man. He's amazing. Oh. Do you know? Do you know what? Here's here's the crazy thing about what we just did today. 
in the last, what, 46 or 36 minutes, we started off talking about the Florida Panthers, right, yep. matching up against the, 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 the New York Islanders, and now we're talking about <laughs> the contract of Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> you know what? I, I've had people say to me, I've had people say to me, well, you got to figure out what you're going to talk about and talk about it. And I said, well, you know what? I'm going to challenge you on that. Because I got, I, I believe if you get really good people like you guys are, and we can talk like this, this has been brilliant. I love oh, it. Oh, I agree. I, love I agree. It. I can't wait till we do it again. I'm going to have yeah. to shut it down now, but it's been fantastic. And we didn't, uh, did we even talk about Philadelphia once? I don't think so. And we're like, hey, how about that? Philadelphia guys that know stuff that's not about Philadelphia. What do you know? <laughs> I don't think I brought anything up. Either no, we, no, we didn't. Not Only we, before the call. Yeah. We were yeah. able to crush Islanders, Florida boys and girls. And you, you we got one. Them, I don't we know we, what. we got one in. Is crushing Islanders, Florida out there. So we did it. It was wonderful. Thanks, guys, for coming. Go check out the podcast, guys. It is great. I watch it all the time. Um, and if you're out there, if you're a writer or whatever, let, let me know. Give me your stuff. We'll, we we can have you on too. Who knows? Yeah. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Hit yep. the hit the thumbs up button. Um, yeah. So yeah, man, check us all out. And um, also tell us all about it in the comment section too. We want yeah, to know. exactly. For real, uh, Steel Flyers. You can reach me on Twitter at Steel Flyers. Um, new website coming out, www.steelflyers.com. That's coming out real soon. Um, just released the second episode of the Steel Flyers podcast. That can be found on Google, Spotify, and Radiocast. So catch me there. And then I'm at JJ Borick26 on Twitter and True Philadelphian Sportscast, True underscore Philly Sport, and the whole thing spelled out on Instagram. And then Flyers Nitty Gritty with the great Jamie Bascal, I also do. And then I write for Pub Sports Radio. And then lastly, Chasing the Pennant Podcast is A-N-Y-P Phillies with two Ps on Twitter. And I'm also going to do videos like I do for Flyers Nitty a little bit on our YouTube page for baseball. Oh, you got to check those out, so. man. Dude, you, you rocked out the last one, man. I'm telling you, that Thanks. was really cool. Yeah, dude. All right. Everybody, I'm glad you listened, and I'm glad to have you, and I'm glad to have you guys. Have a great day, everybody. Till next time, lots of love to you.